Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to do a follow-up from my last video, which was the One Infinity user interface for beginners. As some commenters noticed, the user interface and the software that runs the One Infinity was due for an update. And there were some questions about whether or not the software would change substantially so that my video might confuse new users. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the user interface. I am going to upgrade the software, show you how to do that, and then we're going to walk through any differences that I see. So it's going to be super fun, super exciting. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. And let's go ahead and cut over to the computer so I can show you the upgrade process and all the new features that Onefinity offers. Here we are in the Onefinity user interface. And as you can see, it's asking me to upgrade to 1.07. And that's what we're going to do. Now I am going to use the upgrade over the network function. So hopefully it'll go well and everything will go as according to plan. But if it doesn't, then we will download the upgrade and we will upgrade via USB. So let's go ahead and hit the flyout menu here. We will go to general and we will check upgrade we will click upgrade there we go and let's see what happens password aha interesting valid password All right, well, there you go. Well, that was very unceremonious, and I did absolutely nothing different other than maybe perhaps I mistyped the password the first time. So, let's stand by. The instructions say it should take two minutes. Let's see what happens. I will note the time. All right, well, we're back. I refreshed the browser, and it came back to this screen. No issues. It says that I am at one point seven so I guess there were no issues I would say that maybe a little positive confirmation before the screen just disappeared would have been useful during the upgrade process but I'm not really shocked by the way that it worked so let's go ahead and go back to the main screen I will hit cancel I am not going to hold my machine okay so right off the bat the user interface essentially looks the same. I will tell you that obviously some of the iconography over here has changed. These icons are a little bit different. I actually like them a lot better. Super big, super bold, big arrows, this big dot in the middle. Uh, this text here on the probe is much larger. This, let's see, we minimize it, still the same. These icons are the same. So these icons look a little bit bigger. Uh, I probably have to go back and check against the previous versions so where am i here we'll go ahead and we'll home we'll see what happens okay interesting um so it homed I will tell you the sounds are a little bit different. Uh, you might not be able to hear that. Microphone's kind of far away from the machine. But it may, the sounds were a little bit different. I'll just leave it at that. Um, at a little bit higher pitch. And I just noticed, so even though it says that it's set to metric now, I don't know, that's fine, metric. Everything's just bigger. Imperial. So this is bolded. That tells you what's currently selected. That could be a little bit better, maybe changing the background color. But other than that, pretty much everything looks the same. So I've not zeroed uh, yet. So let's go ahead and zero Z, make sure everything stays the same.
guess that's this guy. Okay, is he rogue? Let's select the same thing that we did before, CNC controller front pocket. Processing new file, simulating, okay. So it simulated the new file, let's blow this up. So just like last time, although it looks like that it's showing you this max Z travel now. That's interesting. So it's showing you the outline of the, the size that the CNC machine can cut. So that's actually pretty useful. And you can see that it went to green here and we're good to go. So everything looks the same there. Okay. <clears throat> So quick run through of the user interface. We have our keypad over here. Again, the numbers and the letters and the iconography is just a little bit bigger. These icons appear to be bigger. Other than that, the user interface is nearly identical. So everything's the same as the previous version in that regard. Let's hit the fly out menu, settings. Everything here looks the same, except it does default to metric. I'm pretty sure that, no, I had it set to metric before, so. We're all good there. Now the acceleration did change. It's much larger than it was before and the max deviation changed. So it's lower. I believe it was 1.05 if I remember properly. So those are some updates and I knew this was gonna happen. I knew that they were gonna make some changes to the default settings. I chose not to save my settings in advance because I just wanted to run it fresh from a new start. So go to motors. So one of the side effects of upgrading to the new software, it will reset these settings uh, for that you did for the homing if you change the homing currents for some reason or another. Now I chose to just go ahead and let it home without uh, knowing that it had reset those values and just to see what would happen and it looks like it worked so we're all good to go there. Now it did retain my travels per revolution setting, thank goodness, because I didn't remember what it was and I'd have to redo that, that's all okay. And it homed just fine, so I'll keep an eye on the homing uh, they say that they changed the homing sequence, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, motor 2 and 3, everything looks th good to go. Again, all the idle current and the uh, homing current seemed like they're at default values now. Tool, not using that, so don't know there, don't know there. Nothing new there. And network everything's good there. So it retained the network settings and the password. It's back on the network. We're good to go. So, hey, uh, I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Aside from some changes to the size of the text, uh, the user interface is essentially unchanged. So my previous video, you're good to go. Uh, not a lot of differences here. So until I run a couple actual G code files through it and see the behavior of the machine with the new control software, I won't really know for sure how well it's performing and we will do that. Probably what I'll do is I'll run a couple things through the machine and add that to the tail end of this video just to give the final thumbs up and then we'll press on from there. So all right, let's go ahead and call it good for right now, run some tests and then we'll wrap up the video. Well, this is future Tom breaking in. I attempted a couple cuts on the new software of the Onefinity, and I wanted to show you the results of what I got with the new software. So I actually made two separate attempts. The first attempt didn't quite go as planned, and I'll show you what happened in just a few moments. And then the second attempt pretty much went off as planned. So I'm gonna show you a quick montage video of our cuts, and then we'll get back to the regularly scheduled video. Thanks everyone.
All right, well, that could have probably gone a little bit better. So what I learned through the process is with the new software, not only did I upgrade the Onefinity behind me, but I also started using a different post processor in Fusion 360. And that post processor requires a special selection because the default values will not produce a desirable outcome. Instead, they will produce the outcome that you saw there. So in Fusion 360, you need to select a box that says circular interpolation rather than not having the box selected. Without the box selected, what it does is it creates a bunch of very small lines to reproduce the arc rather than using the G2 and G3 commands in G code to create the arc. And that is what is causing that, what sounds like grinding or bumping sound because the machine is trying to move very quickly, very small distances repeatedly. And so with the new acceleration and jerk settings, it creates that outcome, which does not produce an optimal result. The actual cutting that I did looked very choppy and very terrible. So once I changed the setting, which you will see here in just a minute, I selected that circular interpolation mode and it went off without a hitch and I got what I was looking for. So let's go ahead and cut over to that quick time lapse. I'll show you that and then we will wrap up this video. All right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it was super fun, super exciting, and definitely informative. I learned a lot through the process, and I hope you did too as well. So if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. But please leave your comments down below. Tell me why, so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.